Okay, so this is the article that was uh, published August 10th, 2017. Okay, the opioid epidemic explained. The opioid epidemic could kill as many as, wow, 650,000 people in the next decade. Ouch. Let's see what this article has to say. If nothing is done, we can expect a lot of people to die. A forecast by Stat included that as many as 650,000 people will die over the next 10 years for opioid overdoses, more than the entire city of Baltimore. The U.S. risks losing the equivalent of a whole American city in just one decade. That would be on top of all the death that America has already seen in the course of ongoing opioid epidemic. In 2015, more than 52,000 people died of drug overdoses in America, about two-thirds of which were linked to opioids. The toll is on its way up, with an analysis of preliminary data from the New York Times finding that 59,000 to 65,000 likely died from drug overdoses in 2016. And now President Donald Trump is declaring the crisis a national emergency. Wow. Wow. This is ridiculous. Essentially, the opposite has happened with opioids. Uh, okay, I skipped over a paragraph, so I'm trying to catch back up. Over the past couple decades, the healthcare system um, bolstered by the pharmaceutical companies flooded the U.S. with painkillers. Then illicit drug traffickers followed suit. Wow, inundating the country with heroin and other illegally produced opioids that people could use once they ran out of painkillers or wanted something stronger. All of this made it very easy to obtain misused drugs. Let's see, meanwhile, there has been little attention to getting people into treatment. According to the Surgeon General's 2016 report on addiction, only 10% of people suffering from a drug over, of a drug use dis. Oh my goodness, I can't even form the words to say this. It's called a drug use disorder. Get specialty treatment. Since when the hell did being a junkie become a disorder? This is insane. I mean, I guess they're saying these things to try to get people to feel sorry for them, but everybody knows that any type of opioid, whether it's prescribed by the doctor or you get on the street, everybody knows it's a drug. I mean, come on. Everybody knows this. This is common knowledge. It's not something where they didn't know. Hell, even Advil is a drug, and everybody knows if you take too many Advils, there's a good chance that you just might not wake up. So, I don't think this should be labeled as a disorder. I think they're just simply junkies. Um, the report attributed the low rate of shortages in the supply of care with some areas of the country lacking affordable options. Oh, my PC is about to die. Uh, okay, let me see if I can plug up my cord. Okay, I'm just trying to connect, get some power going real quick. Alright, there we go, back in business. Okay. Okay, so where did I leave off? Uh, meanwhile, a little. Only 10% of the people. Okay, yeah. The report attributed the low rate of shortages in the supply of care with some areas of the country lacking affordable options for treatment, which can lead to waiting periods of weeks or even months just to get help. That's ridiculous. There's so many, you know, since this epidemic epidemic really came to light, there's been so many centers set up. I don't see why it would take so long for somebody to get treatment when they can basically go to multiple places. Even in the small town that I live in, they have a center here for drug addicts. They even have places where they can go and safely use their drugs just in case they overdose, which is really not helping the problem. All you're doing is coddling the people, which is going to keep them addicted to drugs and they're going to die anyways. Let's see. When you put these two issues together, you get the recipe for disaster. One has been only <clears throat> only further 
accentuated by the social, economic, and mental health issues that have plagued the U.S. for years. This is the story of the opioid epidemic, a crisis that has already taken hundreds of thousands of lives and is likely to kill hundreds of thousands or more over at least the next decade if nothing is done. Well, we might as well get prepared. I would say anybody looking to start a business, um, go into getting you a funeral home because America is not going to do anything to solve this problem. Oh my goodness. Let me see how America's opioid epidemic began. The opioid epidemic began in the 1990s when doctors became increasingly aware of the burdens of chronic pain. Pharmaceutical companies saw an opportunity and push doctors with misleading marketing about the safety. Oh my gosh. Of Wait a minute now. These are doctors. So you mean to tell me doctors were persuaded by pharmaceutical companies to over prescribe their patients. I'm not the smartest person in the world. But I think that doctors are smart people. And being that they spent so much time and money going to school. There is no way on the planet you could tell me that they had no idea that they were getting their patients hooked on drugs simply so that they can come back and purchase more of the drugs from them. That's just ridiculous. Mm. Wow. It says, doctors, many exalted by dealing with difficulty to treat pain patients complied. And in some states, writing enough prescriptions to fill a bottle of pills for each resident? Oh my goodness. Okay, the doctors definitely knew what they were doing. No doubt. And this chart says, Americans consume more opioids than any other country. Wow. Wow. So, America is basically a bunch of junkies. I wonder how under other countries feel about this drug epidemic that's going on in America. So, this goes to show that a lot of your leaders or CEOs of companies are actually drug addicts. So, I mean, can you really depend on, rely on the decisions that they make on a daily basis when the main thing that's on their mind is getting their fix? Mm. I think not. <clears throat> Look at this chart. United States is number one. Okay, America. Then you have Canada, Germany, Denmark, Belgium, Austria, Switzerland, Australia, Holland, Spain, Luxembourg, Norway, Great Britain, Ireland, New Zealand, Sweden, Iceland, Israel. Wow. Isn't that the land of the holy people? You have France, Slovenia, Portugal, Finland, Italy, Martinez, and Greece. Okay, so after hearing the names of those countries, what's the one thing that stands out to you? If you notice, out of all these drug addicts on the planet, not one of these countries has an abundance of African or African descendant people. Hmm, I wonder why. That is very strange. Actually, it's not strange. White people have always been on drugs. Let's see. I'm just going to kind of skip down to some of this. But in no doubt, the doctors definitely knew what they were doing. But, of course, the average white person would never believe that their doctors did this to them on purpose. Most white people are way too busy focusing on black people. What black people are doing, what's the black issue, and, of course, their very favorite topic is black-on-black -black crime. Drug overdose deaths in America. Wow, this is showing from a period of 1999 to 2015. Wow, it looks like it spiked in 2015. Look how high that is. 2015. Wow. 
the opioid epidemic by state. Okay, let's see. State. Wow. West Virginia. Oh my goodness. I know that's Ohio. Ohio, of course, is the hub. Anybody that listens to Lisa Cabrera, you know that Ohio is definitely the hub. But look. Rhode Island. Connecticut. Primarily, all the states that have a lot of white people are the biggest ones affected by this epidemic. As alarming as it may be, even the death toll arguably under understates the death of the crisis because opioid misuse and addiction can lead to many more problems than death. Hang on, I gotta scratch something. From hindering social function functioning to posing a huge financial strain since the drugs can be so costly. About 2.1 million people are estimated to have an opioid use disorder in America, and experts widely agree this is, if anything, an understatement. Yeah, that's definitely an understatement. I know, um, listening to Lisa, she uh, reported that at least 23 million Americans are addicted to opioids as of today. And even that in itself is an understatement. Other drugs can also be involved. A 2003 study found roughly half of heroin-related deaths, related deaths involved alcohol. And the CDC found that 31% of prescription painkillers linked overdose deaths in 2011 were also linked to benzodiazepines, whatever the fuck that is, a legal anti-anxiety drug. I have no idea what the heck that word is. In other words, this isn't just an opioid painkiller crisis. It's a full-on addiction epidemic involving all sorts of legal and illegal drugs. Wow. Let's see. Uh, <clears throat> we have a lot of complex problems in this country without really addressing all of those physical, emotional, and mental health problems just focusing on the opioid supply makes no sense because people still have those problems. Yeah, we do have more problems in this country. Wow. But yeah, the opioid epidemic. Opioid epidemic. Who would have ever thought that this was how things was going to go down, that it was going to get this bad. I know I didn't think that. I was very shocked and surprised when I found out how bad this um, epidemic is in this country. But um, it does explain a lot with um, a lot of the crazies that we run across on a daily basis.